Welcome everyone to another episode of Bioinformatics 101. I'm Pat, your host, and today we're talking about VCF files and what they are. So a VCF file stands for Variant Call Format. It is a pretty simple file, um, tab delimited file, which we'll get into the format briefly. Um, it contains a list of variants. So this file is especially important in healthcare settings. Um, if you have a job in bioinformatics, you'll definitely come across VCFs fairly quick. Um, so it can represent variants in a single sample or multiple samples. So um, a VCF can just have the variants of a uh, single sample or it can actually have hundreds or thousands um, if needs to be. So it also shows other important information so it doesn't just list the variant um, it also has different information about the sequencing and how well supported that variant is. Um, so it'll have things like depth or uh, reads that support that specific variant and then it'll show you variant allele frequencies of what percentage of reads support that variant. Um, and that all goes into how confident you are that, that variant is in fact real. So how is a VCF made? Um, this is just a brief overview. Um, I'm going to go into this in more depth in future videos. But generally there's a sequencer. So you put your sample on the sequencer. You get how how much uh, data you want out of the sample then you take that data and you put it through alignment so if it's human data we are aligning that to a reference sequence so there's the reference sequence for the human genome and we're taking the data that we generated from our sample and aligning it to the reference genome there's also this process called deduplication and recalibration. So that um, those steps help reduce uh, duplicate reads. So a lot of times in the sequencing process, there are duplicates that are created. And this is just a step that helps reduce those. And then the final step that we get to is variant calling. So once we have aligned our reads to a reference genome, we can now pick out the spots where our reads do not match up with the reference, and these are called variants. So the variance callings then generates the VCF, and there are many different options for variant callers. So for the format, these are the standard columns that come in every single VCF. So this is something that will not change. You have your chromosome, your position, an ID tag, um, the reference, so this is the allele that the, what the reference genome says. The alternative allele is what your data is saying. Um, you have a quality column, so that's the quality that that variant is supported. You have a filter column, um, that takes quality and other things into consideration and you can get like a, a pass filter, like this variant has passed quality check. Um, you have an info field and a format field. So the info field can have a lot of different um, information in it and it's not it's not standard at all. So this is something that we might get into a little bit but um, the format itself is very standard but what actually is in each of these columns uh, very much is not standard. So Info field can contain a lot of different stuff. It's just additional information about that variant. And then f for the format, um, let me show you here. It might be easier if you can see. So here we have our chromosome. This is the position where the variant occurs. Um, for ID, this is just an example. If, if a, some variants have an ID, um, they've been seen before and they've been given an ID number. If it hasn't been seen before, a lot of times you'll get this dot, which just means it does not have an ID. So this is what the reference said. So it says it was a T at this position. Our data is saying that it's an A. So we had a quality score of 67. 
the filter was pass. So here in the info field we see um, this DP. So this is like the total depth at that specific site. So we had 27 reads at this site. And this AF is allele frequency. So 44% of our reads supported this variant. And then the format is given in this kind of notation here. Um, each of these stands for something. So this is genotype, this is allele depth, and then this is like total depth. So, and then finally we get to our sample where our sample has been assigned um, the genotype of 01, which is a heterozygous variant. So we have two copies of chromosome 20, um, and it's saying that on one of those copies, we have the reference allele, so one of them is a T. And then on the other chromosome, we have the alternative allele, so A in this case. Um, the allele depths are just showing how many reads supported each of these um, alleles. So 15 reads supported the reference allele, and 12 reads supported the alternative allele. And then, once again, the total depth was 27. VCF files also have headers. So um, all of those uh, different notations that you see in the info field and the format field, those will all be listed in the header. And this can be useful because a lot of times um, there's a lot of differences between VCFs, and you won't know all of the annotations there in the info field or format field. So if that's the case, you can come up to the header and each one of those notations, like for example here DP says that this ID equals DP, then you can look at the description and it says the total read depth. So this will give you a sense of what in fact you're looking at. So what are they used for? So one of the main things they're used for is healthcare. Um, um, you can think of all of the diseases that are caused by different mutations, and um, VCF format is definitely something. If you're working at a hospital or you want to work in a hospital, you'll be working with VCF files a lot. Um, in my job, I work with VCF files all the time. So we work with VCF files for rare disease cases, um, also just common genetic conditions. A lot of times you'll have a VCF file to confirm this, this person has this genetic condition. Um, we use it a lot for cancer. So more and more uh, cancer, cancers are being sequenced. So um, if you come in with a brain tumor, a lot of times they're going to get a piece of your brain tumor and then sequence it and then that helps them make a diagnosis for your for your case um, so they can help classify your tumor correctly and then that can lead to better treatment. It's used in gene therapy if you're making a gene therapy and you're wanting to add a specific variant or you're wanting to um, induce a specific response and edit something you usually can confirm that with a VCF file um, and a lot more. So another kind of branch that it's used in is population and evolution studies. So it's used a lot in ancestry, um, the migration patterns of ancient humans. Um, that's largely been due to looking at variants and looking at what variants belong for specific populations and how they've changed over time. So phylogenetics um, and species classification. So these can kind of bundle together, but if you're interested in wildlife and you wanna know how species have evolved, their history, where, you know, where they branched off from, all of that stuff, um, VCFs and genetics and variants play a huge part in making those classifications. Um, and that's it for today. Uh, these definitely aren't the, the only uses for VCF, but these are the ones that I'm most familiar with. And from my eyes, the, the biggest users of VCF files out there. Um, 
but it's definitely a file type that once you get into bioinformatics, you'll definitely see more and more. Um, so keep an eye out. Okay, thanks for tuning in.